Well, welcome everybody to our Advent devotion for the 6th of December. In these short videos, we're looking at my Advent calendar, which has a promise from God's word for each day. And so I'm just kind of offering a, a reflection on the promise that we find in the Advent calendar. And the promise today is the promise of joy. And the verse of the day is from Nehemiah 8. And it says this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I wonder what kind of words come into your mind when you think of things like the Bible and Christianity and the church and God. I wonder if joy is one of those words, because according to the Bible, it should be. The Bible places a very, very, very high value on joy and shows us that God is joyful and he wants us to be joyful. Now, this verse starts by talking about the joy of the Lord. What is that joy? Whose is that joy? Is that our joy of knowing God or is it God's joy in himself that he has? Is he a joyful God? Well, the answer is both. First and foremost, we need to recognise that God is a joyful God. Before uh, the world was made, there was joy in heaven as the Father loved the Son and loved the Spirit. And when God made the world, he took pleasure in it as he said, it is good. And when God redeemed the world, he, he took pleasure in the work of the Son as Jesus died in our place. And, and when we worship God and live for him, God takes pleasure in it. So the Bible shows that God is a joyful God. And when we know this joyful God, we will be strengthened and we will find joy ourselves. Now, joy is, of course, at the heart of the Christmas story. We thought about that a few days ago when we thought about Jesus as our saviour. And we saw that an angel appeared to some shepherds and said this, Do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy. That news was, of course, the fact that salvation would be given to God's people, to those shepherds and to anyone that would follow Jesus. And in fact, the Bible talks about the cross as something that Jesus went to because there was a joy that would follow it. So Jesus endured the cross, which was horrific, but he was willing to do it because of some joy that would come as a benefit of going to that cross. That benefit was the fact that God would be glorified, but that we might become friends with him. Jesus took joy knowing that we would be reconciled to him. And so he was willing to go to the cross on our behalf. And so we are offered joy because we can know this God. We thought yesterday about friendship. That friendship with God should bring us great joy. Now, now, the joy that God offers isn't the same as some superficial happiness, and it doesn't mean that you will always feel on top of the world. Life is tough, and it will be tough if you don't follow God, and it's tough if you do. But there's something deeper than that. There's a, a joy that doesn't need to go away, something that goes beyond circumstances. And that's the joy of knowing that you are known by God and loved by God. There's a man who's really important in the Bible called Paul. And Paul, before he was a Christian, persecuted Christians. He, he killed them, in fact. And yet he had his life turned around by Jesus and he started living for Jesus. And that was costly for him. It ended up having him, causing him to be put in prison several, several times. He had stones thrown at him. He was beaten up, all kinds of things, shipwrecked. He had a really tough life. And yet Paul maintained joy in all of that. Why? How? Well, because he was so close to this joyful God that he kept his joy no matter what the circumstances were. I find that amazing. I wish my level of joy was that, that strong. Uh, but I know it's linked to the fact that he had such a close walk with God. And so God, friends, offers us joy. He, he wants us to know his joy by walking closely with him. And when we do that, we will be strengthened and we will know his joy. That's what he desires for us. As we come to the end, I just want to read to you the whole of the verse that, that is quoted on here, uh, which is Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Now this comes at a time when Israel, God's people, had been very rebellious. Uh, and, and then Ezra, who uh, was a priest, got up and read God's law and the people started weeping, presumably because they knew how much they'd failed God. But then a man called Nehemiah got up, who was a governor, and, and he, he says this to them. In the midst of their weeping and their sorrow for their sin, he says, go and enjoy choice foods and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
He's saying to the people who are weeping, don't weep. God is gracious and he wants you to find joy. And he encourages them to have a day of celebration in which they enjoy choice foods and sweet drinks. And when I read that at this time of year, I can't help but think of Christmas. That's what we do, isn't it? Enjoy choice food and sweet drinks. And this verse shows that God actually wants us to do that. So when we have our turkey on Christmas Day and our mince pies, God wants that. He wants us to take joy in those things because they are from his good and gracious hand. And of course, we take most joy in the fact of the, that, that Jesus was born for us, that a saviour came into the world. Let me pray now and ask God to give us this joy that we've talked about today. Our Father in heaven, we are amazed that you are a joyful God, that you are joyful in and of yourself. Even before the world was made, there was joy in heaven. And when you spoke it into existence, you took delight in it. You took delight in the work of your son when he died for us. You take delight in your people when we live for you. Lord, we pray that your joy may become our joy. We pray that we would walk so closely with you and be so amazed by your gift of grace that our hearts might be filled with joy. So on this day, we invite your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, to show us more of Jesus and to make us a people marked out by joy. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. See you tomorrow.